Previously on the 40 Year Sim, the Atlanta Hawks defeated the Los Angeles Lakers four games to two to win just the second NBA championship in franchise history. Reggie Theus was the coach. Tim Duncan won finals MVP. And Allen Iverson, Duncan, Phillips, Della Shrimp, Dino Raja, Bouncy Wells, etc. They're all NBA champions. And for some reason, Adam Silver was the one to give out the Elario O'Brien trophy. Not sure why. Doesn't quite make sense. But it is what it is. David Stern is still the commissioner, but Adam Silver now gives away the trophies. So, but that is what happened last season. And now we're getting into the off season. I hope you enjoyed the intro. It took me 10 tries to do it. That's why I don't like doing intros. Uh, <laughs> damn it. Okay. Retired players. Clyde Drexler's retiring. Charles Barkley. Terry Catledge. Detlef Shrimp. Michael Jordan. Whoa. Hakeem Olajuwon. Oh, my God. Mark Price. These are quite some names here. Nate McMillan is retiring. Dennis Rodman, the worm. Age 40, he's finally decided to call it quits. He is done. Alfred Hughes. Brad Doherty. Brad Doherty after 15 seasons. Andrew Kennedy. Grant Long. Kevin Edwards. Olden Polonese has retired. Uh, played for the Spurs. Saronis, Marshallonis, Ricky Barry, Steve Kerr, five-time champion in the Simmons in real life uh, as a player. Danny Manning, Ken Norman. Danny Manning's big. Uh, Charles Shackelford, Doug West, uh, Jeff Sanders, Sam Mitchell, Tim Perry, Dennis Hobson, Brian Shaw retires a champion, Travis Mays, Haywood Workman, Mike Giomi, Jaron Jackson, Everett Stevens. Now we're getting into some of the uh, guys who were in free agency for a while, didn't quite... Lorraine Ellis maybe could have done something. Mark Strickland. But uh, they all retired. Walter McCarty. Oh, wow. I missed that. <laughs> well, I guess he's gone. Because I, I didn't save him in time. Corey Sampson. Did I save him? I don't think I did. Oh, well. These guys just, you know, in this reality, they just couldn't make it. You know, they just couldn't quite hack it in, in, in the 40-year sim. And that's okay. You know, they just, you know. For some reason, I feel like... Uh, they, they should be back in the sim. Maybe I'll bring it back. But Clyde Drexler retired a two-time champion, 12-time All-Star. So looking likely he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Number retirement. Probably gets his number retired with the Blazers is my guess. Um, but yeah, he his final season in Boston, not very memorable, but his career was. Barkley, one-time champion, 12-time All-Star. Won that championship with the Mavericks in 1987. Catledge. Uh, Schrempf, uh won a championship last uh, with the Hawks this past season. Of course, Michael Jordan, six-time MVP, six-time champion, seven-time, seventeen-time All-Star. Hakeem, sixteen-time All-Star, one-time champion. Mark Price couldn't win it, couldn't win a championship. Dennis Rodman, five-time champion, three-time All-Star, six-time Defensive Player of the Year. Is that enough? First team All-Defense seven times. Is that going to be enough? to get him into the Hall of Fame? Good question. Well, we're going to find out soon enough because that, that's that been my worry is that, you know, in real life he made the Hall of Fame with his accolades, but uh, Danny Manning, you see his accolades too. But uh, is Dennis Rahman going to end up in the Hall of Fame? Let's let's get past staff retirements so we can find out. So we got Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Hakeem Olajuwon, Clyde Drexler, Ron Harper, some reason in the Hall of Fame, despite not actually retiring. I think I guess he was supposed to retire, but didn't. 2K, I don't I don't know, but he's coming back next year. So I guess he should feel good knowing that he's already a Hall of Famer. Um, because he's right there in the list. But Dennis Rodman is not in the Hall of Fame. It makes me believe that uh, the all the, making the All Star probably like seven or eight times is probably what what does it. Um a couple of all NBA teams. Dennis Rodman did not make any. He made the uh, all defensive teams a couple of times. He won defensive player of the year a couple of times. But uh, I think he made three all stars, right? We just saw that. But not enough. Not enough accolades for Rodman to, uh, to crack into the Hall of Fame, which is very shocking to me. But obviously, everybody else in this list, well deserving of being in the Hall of Fame. 
and even Ron Harper, who I don't think he's even in the Hall of Fame in real life, right? But he won five championships, eight-time All-Star. He really blossomed as a scorer when he was with the Pistons and uh, obviously a great defender for so many years. But, uh, yeah, no, Dennis Rodman. It's, it's, a, it's a shame not to see him uh, get memorized the way those guys did because, obviously, Rodman had a big impact in the league. And, again, <laughs> awkwardly, Ron Harper gets his number retired for, with the Bulls. He hasn't retired yet, though. Maybe he changed his mind at the last minute. That's what we'll go with. He changed his mind at the last minute and decided to come back. But, as uh, for now, uh, he is, quote, unquote, retired. He got his number retired with the Bulls, Drexler with the Blazers, Michael Jordan with the Bulls. Uh, Danny Manning gets his number retired with the Suns, which is which is nice. Barkley with the Mavericks, and Olajuwon with the Rockets. So, those are the number of retirements. Nice to see the Mavericks have another uh, retirement, retired number. Uh, Joe Dumars and Mark Aguirre. I also have their numbers retired with the Mavericks. Um, so that so that's pretty fun. Danny Manning. Uh, nice to see him get his number retired, uh, despite not really having that many accolades. Let's check out the total points. Michael Jordan, over 41,000 total points. Kareem uh, is second place now. You got Magic, Will, Hakeem finished in top five. Let me focus on the newer people. Karl Malone, just outside the top 10. Patrick Ewing in the top 15. Barkley retired in the top 16. Drexler's in the top 20, as well as David Robinson. Reggie Miller on the outside of the top 20. He could he could really get up there in these next two seasons. Mark Aguirre, uh, John Drew, Len Bias. Len Bias is up there. How about that for someone who uh, obviously died before he could really play a single game in the NBA? He's he's in the top 30 in the sim. Uh, Venus Abonis in the top 35. Chris Mullen. Those guys are probably going to retire next year or the year after. Reggie Lewis. You know, the, the, again, the, these are guys who are, are they're on their way. Mitch Richmond, um, Drazen Petrovic. Uh, it's, yeah, again, it's cool to see some of these guys who died young. Uh, be on this list, you know. I, I think that's the, uh, what's most fun about seeing this. Joe Dumars, Ron Harper, uh, Jay Humphreys. He's re he retired, right? Larry Johnson's in the list. Larry Johnson, Della Shrimp just 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 made it. Rod Strickland, Dino Raja. So that's that. Michael Jordan, first place in field goals made. Reggie Miller is crushing it in the three pointers made list. He is ahead by a long shot, and it'll be fun to see who can overtake him uh, in this category, which is full of a lot of, you know, uh, guards mostly, right from the late 80s, drafted in the late 80s, in the 90s, right? Um, rebounds, Will Chamberlain is first there still, and it look, doesn't look like any... Uh, Hakeem Olajuwon fi finished with 15,000. Rahman had 13,000. Ewing has 13,000, almost 14,000. But it's hard to see anyone overtaking Will or even getting close to Bill Russell uh, in the rebound category. So interesting to, to, to see if that happens. Dennis Robbins in the top 14, like I said. Uh, Vita's a bonus in the top 15. And again, and, and like, 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 like the others, nice to see uh, Sabonis in these lists, even though he, in real life he only played for a couple of seasons in the NBA. Uh, I think from like 95 to 2002. But here he's had a nice long career. Uh, assists, John Stockton still number one in assists. Uh, Michael Jordan's 11, though. So, so can't call him a ball hog if he was a uh, top 11 in assists, right? Ron Harper's in the top 15. Danny Ainge, Tim Hardaway uh, on the outside looking in on the top 15. Hakeem. Hakeem Olajuwon has finished number one in blocks. We'll see if Ewing can surpass him, but doesn't look likely. Steals. Michael Jordan is, is tops there. Minutes, blah, 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 blah. Michael Jordan finished second in points per game. And then there's some percentages to look at. But, uh, yeah, the big takeaway, though, is Michael Jordan uh, is now the all-time leader in points scored. In uh, games played, he's top 10. So, nice to see those career NBA records. Um, he also had a lot of 40-point and 50-point games. And yeah, so that, that's those. That's the career. If you guys were curious, there it is. Let's move on to league history. We got the G League now. I don't know if I'm going to be showing G League games. That's a. We'll see. We'll see if there's a any way for me to do that. If there, uh, right now, I don't think there's enough interesting players in the G League to do that. But if there's a reason to do it, I'll do it. Uh, defensive key violation. Uh, change uh, the uh, backcourt violation is now eight seconds. 
We got some team branding changes, some uh, uniform changes. We'll be looking at that in the latter half of the video when I go over all the rosters. We'll check out the floor, floors and the new courts of some of these uh, teams. I don't know if did I really, I don't think I really did that in the previous offseason episode because uh, I had to blend it with the opening weekend episode. But yeah, we'll be able to really dive into these rosters at the end of this episode and check out the new courts you know memphis grizzlies memphis grizzlies they're no longer no longer the vancouver grizzlies they are now the memphis grizzlies that's a big change they have moved uh from canada to the you know to south south i was gonna say south america to the south in america uh you guys as you can see some of those rule changes have been instated um in the, in the league meetings they have been approved so let's move on to the draft lottery. This one is uh, some interesting prospects in this one. Uh, the Bulls have two lottery picks thanks to the Scotty Pippen trade, which backfired on the Rockets big time. Um, so now the Bulls uh, have two, yeah, two lottery picks. And the Rockets, despite their, their terrible season, are left to not have their own pick. I think they have a Kings pick. Uh, later in the draft because they traded Scotty Pippen to the Kings, but yeah, it's you know Rockets. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be. I, I'm I'm really interested in seeing how they are able to uh, rebuild despite being handicapped, not having a, their own pick this year. It's going to be. Um, I'm kind of looking. I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing how that how they're able to work it out. But the lottery starts now. 76ers get the 13th pick as as expected. Uh, the Magic at the 12th pick via the Nets. The Nets traded somebody to the Magic. And I don't know. But yeah, the Magic get the Magic have the Nets pick. Celtics with uh, pick number 11. So let's uh, let's see with the 10th pick. Who's the 10th pick? Ugh, I can't talk. 10th pick belongs to the Timberwolves. They once again narrowly missed out on the playoffs. But they still get a top 10 pick. And this is not a bad uh, draft. So maybe they can get somebody good. The Grizzlies, they must have had a, someone else's pick. Oh, Dallas. Okay. So the Grizzlies had the Mavericks pick. Uh, so they got pick. Uh, they have a top 10 pick in this draft as well. The Denver Nuggets uh, end up with the eighth pick. And that's their own. So we'll see what they're able to do with that. Let's check out the, the seventh pick now. Is that going to belong to the Suns? Yes, it will. The Suns, with pick number seven, they had a disappointing year, and they they made some changes to their to their roster. Uh, they're they're kind of uh, moving forward with a the rebuild there. Raptors won't have the sixth pick. That's going to belong to the Jazz. So that is an interesting turn of events. The Raptors now have a top three pick. Um, we'll see what happens with that. Wizards won't have the fifth pick. That's going to belong to the Bulls, which is going to be the Rockets pick. Okay, so Rockets fans, you know, it's at least it's not the number one pick. You know, it's it could be worse. And then Bulls will also have the fourth pick. So interesting, they're going to have the fourth and fifth pick. Uh, I don't think any any trades are going to be in order. They 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 need a good number of young players uh to continue their rebuild so and, and their development so yeah i think they're going to keep that pick wizards won't have the third pick that's going to belong to the milwaukee bucks milwaukee bucks wow they jumped a lot wow weren't they 39 and 43 now they have the number three pick their 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 insane lottery luck continues uh wizards won't have the second pick that's going to belong to the Toronto Raptors and the number one pick uh, is going to belong to what the Washington Wizards okay so very interesting interesting to see um, how this draft is going to shake out a lot of interesting prospects instead of showing you the prospects I just want to dive right into the draft uh, but as you can see yeah the Rockets do have the 14th pick uh, via the Kings trade uh, and yeah, you can see the other, uh, where all the other teams are at in the, in this draft. Uh, okay. Let's get into it. Let's get into 2001 NBA draft. First pick Washington wizards. Let's see what they're going to, who they're going to select with their number one pick. See, David Stern still commissioner. 
He just doesn't want to give away the Larry O'Brien trophy anymore for some reason. Gilbert Arenas! Gilbert Arenas uh, is going to be uh, Washington Wizard. Pau Gasol going to the Toronto Raptors. Very interesting. Milwaukee Bucks are going to select Tyson Chandler. Uh, very nice. Bulls selecting Jason Richardson with their with the fourth pick. Uh, Michael Jordan's replacement finally, perhaps. Shane Battier with the third with the fifth pick. That's a nice group of, of wings right there. Uh, Joe Johnson goes to the Jazz. That's a, another great pickup. Um, this is a good draft. Tony Parker going to the Suns. Interesting that he slid that far. Um, Jameson Brewer going to the Nuggets. I don't, I'm not quite sure about that one. Uh, Grizzlies are going to select Kwame Brown. Oh, no. Kwame Brown going to the Grizzlies. That's the first big whiff, right? Eddie Griffin going to the Timberwolves. Celtics selecting Jamal Tinsley. Okay, he played for the Pacers for a number of seasons in real life. That could be a good good pickup. Earl Watson going to the Orlando Magic. They could use a, a point guard. We'll see how he does for them. Mehmet Okur. Mehmet Okur. Okur. Going to the Sixers. Not a bad pickup. Maurice Evans to the Rockets. Who else is left? Blazers going to get Vladimir Radmanovic. Which is a, another solid pick. Another solid pickup. Warriors, Omar Cook. Point guard from St. John's. Samuel Delembert. Delembert, I think, is the last name. Going to the Grizzlies. So they got two centers from this draft. Zach Randolph going to the Bulls. So the Bulls really having a nice draft so far. Richard Jefferson going to the Pistons. That's cool. I like that. Actually, I like that a lot. That's a great pickup for them. Uh, Kedrick Brown going to the, the Mavericks. They got their, their new uniforms and whatnot. Troy Murphy going to the Pacers. Houston Rockets are going to select and Andres Nocioni. Nocioni? Nocioni? Nuggets selecting Jamario Moon. Definitely recognize the name. Mavericks again with another pick. Rodney White. Let's see if there's any other interesting players in this draft. He are going to select... Gerald Wallace. That's actually a really good pick pickup for them. Um, he was a really nice player. Bobby Simmons to the Bulls. He's, that's another good pick, right? That's a, he, he had some good years, right? Alvin Jones to the Sonics. They got their uni new uniforms. New look. Raptors select Tang Hamilton. I'm not familiar with him. Uh, you can see the Bulls have quite a few more picks. Eddie Curry. Uh, but the la that's the last pick of the first round, I believe. Eddie Curry going to the Rockets, which isn't bad. That's not a bad pickup either. Not a bad pickup. Charlie Bell to the Bulls. I guess there's a couple of second rounders that um, get drafted that are interesting. Let's see if that, that holds true. Carlos Arroyo. Carlos Arroyo uh, from Puerto Rico going to the Bulls. Gerald Sasser to the Grizzlies. I love the, the, the Grizzlies uniforms uh, when they first moved to Memphis. Raul Lopez going to the Bulls. So they got a couple, couple of point guards in second round. Magic select Dean Oliver. Uh, another point guard getting, getting picked. Phoenix Suns. Norm Richardson, who I definitely recognize the name. We'll see if he ends up being any uh, being noteworthy in this in this sim tier. Brown going to the Wizards. Let's, anything else? Anything else of, of, of note? Michael Bradley to the Pistons. There must be a reason why we're still looking at this. Raptors, Trenton Hassel. Uh, okay, Spurs selecting Lauren Woods. Is there some diamond in the rough deep in this draft? Otherwise, I would cut this. Stephen Hunter to the Bucks. Utah Jazz are going to select Ken Johnson of, from Ohio State. Boston Celtics, Sean Lampley. Okay, I'm starting to feel like there is another interesting guy in this draft. Mike Wilkes to the Jazz. 5'10 at a Rice. Oh, the second, oh, I know that guy. The Sagana Diop. The Sagana Diop to the Bulls. He was a good player. Terrence Morris to the Wizards. So, wow, the Bulls had really cleaned up in this draft. Uh, they got some guys that they can, you know, either use in, in trades uh, in a few years if they develop them right. Or, um, you know, they, 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 they kind of have a starting five. Uh, well, they don't have, they didn't get a well, I guess Arroyo is a point guard, but not really a starter. 
Uh, but they have a they have a good crop of, crop of guys. Oh yes, this is why we kept doing g going on. Uh, Brian Scalabrini uh, just got drafted. Was that the Pistons? I think we saw. That's fun. All right, so that's the draft. I'm gonna go over the rosters, the new courts in this next segment here. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. And yeah, let's get right into that. Let's get it right into the rosters, the transactions, the new courts, the new jerseys, etc. Right about now. So let's start out by checking out the transactions that have happened during the off season. Uh, Mavericks traded Jerry Stackhouse to the Pacers for Derek McKee in a first round pick. Suns traded Sam Cassell and Randy White to the Nuggets for Darius Miles, Kenny Smith, um, in a top 10 protected pick, which belonged to the Cavaliers originally. There was a three team trade. This was pretty big. Doug Christie went to the Raptors, Vinny Del Negro to the Knicks, uh, Len Bias to the Raptors, and a couple of second round picks went to the Raptors and Knicks. And to Antoine Walker. Went to the Spurs, Joe Smith to the Knicks, Khaled Reese to the Spurs, Dan Marley to the Knicks, Mark Jackson to the Raptors, John Starks to the Spurs, and a lottery protected first round pick, no three to the Raptors. Um, important that's a lottery protected pick because we know who's in the 2003 draft. But uh, I think the big takeaway here Antoine Walker going to the Spurs, Rod Stricken and Brent Berry got traded to the Knicks for Chris Anderson, a couple second round picks, and Dan Marley. Dan Marley then got traded from the Rockets to the Mavericks from a team Cleves and two second round picks. And then Andrew uh, Andre Miller, Tim Thomas got tr uh, traded from the Wizards to the Mavericks in exchange for Al Harrington, Dan Marley, Mike Mer Miller, Mike Miller and a uh, first round pick. So Dan Marley had a quite a journey uh, only to end up on the, on the Wizards. And then you got Kendall Gill getting traded from, uh, the Blazers to the Heat for a lottery protected pick. And then there was a three-team trade. Tom Gugliotta going to the Lakers. Mookie, Mookie Blaylock going to the Magic. And Kurt Thomas going to the Sixers. I'll explain that when we get to the rosters. But, uh, yeah, that was that was an interesting one. Chris Mim to the Pacers for Troy Murphy. Greg Ostertag to the Hornets for Brian Cardinal. And two second-round picks. Matt Bullard to the um, Magic for Chris Crawford. Purvis Ellison getting traded to the Timberwolves for uh, Abdul Shamsuddin, Rick Brunson, a second round pick, and then finally, this is a this is a pretty big one. Thea Ratliff getting traded from the Suns to the Grizzlies for Michael Red, Kwame Brown, and two first round picks. Uh, one is lottery protected, and one is a top ten protected pick for 2003. Uh, and again, I'll go into that more. Uh, as we get into the rosters, 76ers, this is their roster. Not much change. Nick Van Exel, Eddie Jones, Glenn Robinson, Elton Brand, Marcus Camby. That's the starting five. Kurt Thomas coming off the bench. I feel like they could really use some rim protection, rim protection coming off the bench as opposed to Tom Gugliotta, who was uh, more, who's more of a scoring forward uh, than, than what they need. Aaron McKee also coming off the bench for them. Brevin Knight. Has uh, progressed to an 80 overall and he's their backup point guard. You got Ron Mercer, Donald Foyle, Ivano Newbill, Johnny Taylor, Hank Gathers, Ud Udoka. Okur is down here. I'm sure Okur is going to eventually progress into something interesting. Maybe he ends up becoming a, a backup center for them. And at some point, he's going to start whether it's for the Sixers or somebody else, but he's definitely going to start at some point. So is Brevin Knight. Brevin Knight's 25. He, it's about time he, he did something interesting in the this, in this sim. But he's, he's going to be the pack-up point. Gar for the Sixers. Uh, Sixers, they missed the playoffs the past year. I think they have a talented team. I think they could they can get right back into the mix, the playoff mix. Um, but the East is a very tough conference, so we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. The Bucks. Jason Terry is their starting point guard. They got Manu Ginobili starting at uh, shooting guard. Jim Jackson at small forward. Dirk Nowitzki uh, is their power forward, and he's an 91 overall. Dikemi Matumbo still here. You got Chris Childs as their backup point. Uh, Daniel Marshall coming off the bench, too. Shannon Anderson. Jamal Crawford. Howard Isley. Tyson Chandler, who I don't think he's going to be actually – uh, in the rotation year one. Let's see if that's the case. Yeah, no, he's gonna, he's just outside the rotation. They do need a legit backup center. Well, I guess that would be Tyson Chandler, but here's the Bulls. 
they're still very much developing and in the middle of a rebuild. You got Troy Hudson starting at, at point guard. Jason Richardson, who they just drafted, is their two guard. Andre Karolinko, starting small forward, AK-47. Victor Alexander, who they got for free agency, is their, uh, their the wise veteran, the power forward. Got Bryant, Big Country Rees as their starting center. Then the bench, very interesting. You got Brian Skinner. You got Derek Anders- Anderson, who's back. I guess he's not going to be the two guard. I'm sure they're going to be trading him at some point, but he's still on the team. He's just they want to they want Jason Richardson to start because he's better. Let's just, <laughs> that's why. Uh, Stromile Swift uh, off the bench as a backup power forward. Shane Battier for now is not not in the uh, starting five, but he's in the rotation. You got Carlos Arroyo as their backup point guard. Dan Lange, Zach Randolph. Troy Murphy, the Sagana, Diop, and Bobby Simmons. Very interesting roster overall. They've got some guys that, that, that if they develop, they could be a very interesting uh, part of the team. Zach Randolph, I, I, I like to think he's going to be a big part of the team uh, in the future, maybe just not this season. But I think eventually he could become their starting power forward sooner than later. But that's the Bulls. They're going to be bad. They're going to be a bad team this year, but they have a lot of interesting players. So that's something to look forward to. The Cavaliers, Terrell Brandon, Reggie Miller, Tony Kukoc, LaFonso Ellis, and Dale Davis. This is starting five. Tyrone Hills coming off the bench. Chris Mills, Eldon Campbell, Matt Maloney, Hubert Davis, Marco Yarich, Lloyd Vaught, Dickerson, Scott Brooks, Lance Blanks. See, I think the start, the rotation kind of stops after Hubert Davis, I think. Uh, but hey, this team made it to the conference semis. They still have a very strong team. They lost Roy Marble uh, in for agency, or I don't know if they lost him or they just didn't want to bring him back. But uh, but two coach sliding right in there as a starting small forward. Uh, this team won for 54 games. No reason to believe they can't replicate that this season. Maybe make a real run for it in the Eastern Conference Finals. Maybe they can make the finals. They have a really talented team. Uh, and it's a pretty nice, deep bench. So I really think this Cavaliers team can uh, do what they did last year, maybe do even better than that, you know? So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how things go for the Cavaliers uh, moving forward. The Boston Celtics, not much change here from last year. Kenny Anderson, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, Lamar Odom, Brian Grant, Luke Longley off, coming off the bench, Billy Owens, Malik Rose, Bob Shura, Jamal Tinsley, Sean Marks, uh, Mikey Moore, Sean Green, and Del Curry, who I'm, he's just a veteran leader or whatever. Uh, not, I don't think he's going to be seeing much playing time this season. But uh, the Celtics, they were on, they're on the cusp. They're on the cusp of making the playoffs. Could this be the year they finally break through? I think it's going to be the year. I think it's going to be the year. And this is why the Sixers, it's going to be tough for them because you got, got you got teams like the Celtics and the Bucks. Bucks are a team that you've got to take seriously this year. Cavaliers, of course. And you got the Celtics, who I think, uh, obviously, they have a talented group of uh, guys and Ray Allen and Paul Pierce. But they also got Lamar Odom and Brian Grant uh, as their center. So, so, yeah, this is a very talented, young, uh, fairly young uh, Celtics team. And Ray Allen's 26. You know, Paul Pierce only 24. Lamar Odom only 21. These are young guys. Kenny Anderson's a little bit older. My, my point is, it's about time. It's about time this team made some noise and actually made the playoffs. So we'll be monitoring that. Uh, it's time. It's time. Clippers, Penny Hardaway, Larry Hughes, Paige Sojakovic, Chris Webber, Vladi Divas is a starting five. You got Lionel Simmons coming off the bench. Bison Dele, Doug Overton, Kevin Ollie, Ethan Thomas, Eric Pietkowski, Calvin Booth, Tyrone Liu, Kirk Lee. Clippers, they're a finals, possible finals contender. With this team, with this roster, they made they finally made it past the first round last season. I think they could take a step further and, and make a push for the conference finals or better. So, I mean, they definitely have the, the, the squad to do it. Penny Hardaway is leading the way. And they're going to give the Lakers a serious, serious test, I think. So we'll see if that holds true, but that's what I'm thinking for this team. I think they're going to be a finals contender. The Memphis Grizzlies, Jason Williams, Vince Carter, Jalen Rose, Keith Van Horn. They lost Akeem Olajuwon, but they gained Theo Ratliff, which I think is a nice pickup for them via trade. Tony Dumas, Corey Maggette, still here. 
Mitch Richmond still here, Melvin Booker, Samuel Delembert, Jabari Smith, Jacques Vaughn, and Jerome Moiso. I don't quite know that guy, but hey, they made the playoffs last year, won 45 games. They're they're uh, in a new city, a new location, new uniforms, new court. Let's check out the court. That's not the court. <laughs> New court, new city, new court, <laughs> new court. Here we go, yes. Here's the new court. Bam. Vince Carter. Uh, I like this a lot, actually. I don't think I want. I don't think I want Vince Carter to leave the Grizzlies. He just looks right uh, in this Memphis uniform. I don't know. Something looks good about this, but. Uh, they're definitely a playoff contender. We'll see if they can do anything better than be a first-round exit kind of team. But I think bringing on Theo Radliff definitely helps them uh, be a legit playoff contender in the West. The Hawks. Now, the Hawks, speaking of talented, Chauncey Billups, Allen Iverson, Bonzi Wells, Tim Duncan, Dino Raja is back. Darren Armstrong, I think, is a free agency after this year. It's a free agent after this year. You got Carlos Williamson, John Williams, Malik Seeley. Felton Spencer, Tyus Edney, Bo Kimball, Deshaun, blah, 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 etc. So, yeah, beyond, let's say, uh, Malik Silly or Felton Spencer, not the most talented or uh, bench, but still a very talented team, especially at the top. You know, they basically have a big three in Billups, Iverson, and Tim Duncan. They won the championship last year. They can repeat. They could absolutely repeat. I think they could do better than what they did last year. This is a 60-win team in my eyes. Um... Uh, they, they got the talent. They got the goods. I think this team could be even better than they were last year. They did win 60 games and, and make it back to the finals and win it again. They definitely have the talent to do so. I'm looking forward to seeing how it shakes out. They, Miami Heat, Gary Payton, Kendall Gill, who's 33 years old but still playing pretty well. They got Clifford Robinson, P.J. Brown, Alonzo Mourning, Dana Barrows coming off the bench, Jay Edwards, Yinka Dare, Lamont Murray, Randy Brown, Morris Taylor, Cedric Henderson, Gerald Wallace is down here, Brandon Armstrong. Not the best bench. Gerald Wallace could eventually be interesting down the road. Um, but they were really good last year, won 55 games. They got Kendall Gill as their starting two guard now. So we'll see how it goes for them. But I definitely think they could uh, make another push for the finals. They were close. They came really close last season to make it the finals. I think they could, uh, you know, just like the Hawks, they have uh, a lot of talent. They brought a lot of the same players back. And the additions that they have, uh, I think, make them just as good, if not better, than they were last year. So we'll see how it plays out in the court. But, again, this is another team that's a potential finals contender. The Hornets no longer have Michael Jordan. So this is what they look like now in the post-Jordan universe. They got Eric Snow, Katina Mobley, Jamal Mashburn, Richard Lewis, Scott Pollard, Terry Mills. God Sham God, Ricky Davis, Greg Ostertag, Judd Bushler, Stanley Roberts, Keon Dooley, Keon Dooley, Jason Collier, and etc. So this is still a very talented team. Without Michael Jordan, that's gonna that's gonna hurt them a lot not having him. But Jamal Mashburn now is their bona fide star on the team. He's gonna be the number one option. Uh, Richard Lewis is now the starter. Terry Mills is coming off the bench. They're going to New Orleans next next year, so they have no reason to start tanking, right? They they they're gonna go to a new city, and they gotta they have to give New Orleans a reason to come to the games, right? So keep this team talented, uh, try to make a push for the playoffs this year, so that they can build on the hype for next year. That's kind of the goal for this season. That's the Hornets, though. Still a very talented team. The Jazz. I think this Jazz team is definitely on the on the come up. They're definitely go heading in the right direction. Steve Francis is a point guard. Kerry Kittles, Anton Jamison, Kenyon Martin, Lorenzo Wright, Rafer Alston, Sharon Wright, Chanel Scott, Joe Johnson, Matt Hartbring, Marcus Liberty, Trailer, etc. Yeah, this Jazz team, they the, the the young players are starting to develop. They're starting to, you know, look like something substantial. And we'll see how it plays out on the court. But as far as I'm concerned, this is a team that could really make a serious uh, run at the playoffs. 
I think they only won 16, 19 games last season. Yeah, they were 19, 19 and 63. I think they're going to win at least 35, 40 games. Um, and if not, if they don't do that, I guess they just need more growing up to do. They have more growing up to do maybe than I think. But I think they, they might be a 40-win team uh, or maybe even a little bit better than that. They definitely have the, the young talent uh, to make a run, to try to make a run for the playoffs. So we'll see if they can do that. The Kings, David Wesley, Reggie Lewis, Scotty Pippen, Roddy Rogers, Arvidas Sabonis, Chris Gatling. They brought back, uh, for uh, they brought back some guys like Kevin Johnson and Chris Mullen. They got Terrence Terrence Wrencher as well, Doug Smith, Charles Oakley still here, Keith Smart, Steve Hood, Randy Livingston. This team barely made the playoffs last year at 38 and 44, as you see here. But uh, despite being an old team, they still have a lot of talent. And I think they can make it back to the playoffs. But, yeah, they were reaching the end of the line for the Kings for sure. I don't know how how deep into the playoffs they can get, even if they make it there. So The Knicks, kind of similar spot as the Kings. Rod Strickland, Latrell Sprewell, Anthony Mason, Joe Smith, Patrick Ewing, Brent Barry, Charlie Ward, Ed Horton, Vinny Del Negro, Jerome Williams, Chris Crawford, Eddie Gill, Popeye Jones, Eddie House. We are reaching the end of the line for the Knicks. Uh, there's going to be a qu- I'm almost certain Ewing's going to retire after this year. I'm almost positive he is. Uh, in which case, you know, they got a lot of questions. You know, are they going to keep Sprewell? Are they going to trade him to get some assets? You know, there's a lot of interesting draft classes coming up in the next couple of years. Is it is, it, is this the right time to start a rebuild uh, after this season? So they'll, they'll try to make a serious run at the playoffs this year because they still have Ewing. They, they want to, you know, have him go out on a high note and they still have spree. Will. they have Anthony, Anthony Mason too. They got Joe Smith. We'll see what happens with him. Um, Rod Strickland as the point guard, you know, kind of, I don't know quite know what to make of that, but um, yeah, this is still, uh, they still got a lot of talent in this team, but like the Kings, I could see them kind of just, just scraping by maybe getting an eight seed or a seven seed. But really what it's all about is this, this is kind of the, the, the beginning of the end for this Knicks squad with it, during the Ewing era and approaching a new era. Maybe the new era includes Sprewell. Maybe it doesn't. I'm kind of thinking it won't, uh, but we'll see. Moving on to the Lakers. Derek Fisher, Kobe Bryant, Brian Russell, Tom Gugliotta, Shaq, Avery Johnson, John Barry, Gary Trent, Rick Fox, Chris Morris, Richard Dumas, Fred Hoiberg, Joel Prisbilla, and, yeah, that's that's about it for the Lakers. Made the finals last year. They could certainly do that again. I'd say they're a top-heavy team, but Brian Russell, they got from free agency. He's a nice wing defender for them. Tom Gugliotta brings some scoring from the front court. Uh, and now it's time. Derek Fisher, it's about damn time to see what he can do as starting point guard. He's ready, I think. Uh, that, that's what made me confident that um, trading Mookie Blalock was a – was something to do because it's time for Derek Fisher to see what he could do uh, as starter, as starting point guard. So he's been with the Lakers for a number of seasons now. It's time for him to step up. And they got Avery Johnson as their backup point uh, to help to help out. But yeah, this Lakers team obviously could still make a serious run at the finals. They could win the championship this year for all I know. Uh, and they, they have the squad to do it. But there's also a lot of... There's, there's the Clippers to worry about in the West. Uh, maybe even the Sonics and the Spurs will get to them. But in the East, of course, they got, with, with the Hawks out there, you just never know. But the Lakers definitely, on paper, have a team that can make the finals and maybe even win the championship. The Magic. So the Magic had Mookie Blaylock, Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill, Vin Baker, Rick Smith from Free Agency. 35-year-old Rick Smith. We'll see if he has anything left in the tank. Randy Woods, Quinton Richardson, Keith Kloss, Matt Bullard, Bobby Jackson, Earl Watson, not the best bench, not the best bench, but the hell of a starting five, especially at the top with T-Mac and Grant Hill. Mookie Blaylock uh, is 34 years old. Like Smiths, we'll see if, how much he has left in the tank. Uh, Vin Baker's 29. So, yeah, this is a hell of a talented team, but it's thin, right? Like, their bench isn't great. So it's really going to depend. They're really going to depend on T-Mac and Grant Hill heavily. And hopefully Mookie Blaylock and Rick Smith can still uh, be effective enough that this team uh, can make it back to the playoffs and maybe be uh, a, a top team in the East. But, you know, the Heat and the Hawks feels like they have much deeper teams than 
the magic. So I'm a little bit worried about the magic in that regard. But that's the magic. The Mavericks, they got a new look, new uniforms, new court. And they have Andre Miller as a starting point guard now. Wesley Person, Derek McKee, Larry Johnson, Carlos Rogers, Tony Delk coming off the bench, Tim Legler, Tim Thomas, Hedo Turkaloo, Samaki Walker, Jamal Maglore, Speedy Claxton, uh, Ronnie White, Kendrick Brown. A lot of young, talented players in this team. Uh, so they're a team that I they could be good enough to win 40 games, but it's really about the development of these guys down here, seeing how these guys develop, like Maglore and Turkaloo and Tim Thomas and um, Andre Miller. So, so yeah, they're, they're, they're hoping they can stay competitive while – while developing their young core. But let's check out their court. Did I not? I did it again, didn't I? I did it again, damn it. So here is the Mavericks court. New logo, new uniforms. Mark Cuban is the owner, I guess, now, you know, officially. Cause I, I'm pretty sure this is what started the new uh, ownership was getting immediately getting new uniforms, new logos, new court design. So Larry Johnson's still here, though. We'll see how much longer he stays with his team. But it's uh, going to be fun to see this new court and the new uniforms and the fun young roster. Moving on to New Jersey Nets. Steve Nash, Fashawn Leonard, Sean Marion, Antonio McDice, Sadrunas Ilgaskis, J.R. Reed, Rex Chapman, Jeff McGinnis, McInnes, Eric Murdoch, James Posey, Othello Harrington, Anthony Bonner, Courtney Alexander, Pete McKeel. So this Nets team, I think they won 40 games last year. And again, this is another team that uh, teams like the Sixers have to worry about in the, in the Celtics. This is a very talented Nets team. They definitely have the talent to make the playoffs this year. And Steve Nash is uh, a borderline all-star at this point. Sean Marion as well. So, yeah, this team could definitely do some damage in the East. But are they as strong as some of the other East teams that we've seen? Maybe not. Maybe more needs to be done over this next year or so to really beef up this team to actually become uh, playoff contenders. But for now, I definitely think they could sneak into the playoffs given the talent that they have, especially with the talent uh, of Steve Nash and Sean Marion and McDice and uh, El Goskis as their center. Yeah, this team could definitely uh, make some noise, but I don't know how noisy they could be. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Denver Nuggets, I think they have a new court. We'll check out their court. Cause I'm pretty sure it's a bit it's a bit different. But they got Sam Cassell, Steve Smith, Glenn Rice, Christian Leitner, Oliver Miller, Randy White, Robert Pack, Stephen Jackson coming off the bench, Irvin Johnson, Chris Smith, Pooh Richardson, Donald Harvey, Jamario Moon's down there. A lot of talent on this team. A lot of talent. We'll see if it translates to being a playoff team, but they definitely could do it. They definitely have the, the capability of being a playoff team. So, yeah, yeah, you can see, you can see the Pepti Center uh, logo at the bottom there. Yeah, the, the court is definitely a little bit different. Not crazy different, but they're in a new arena, the Pepsi Center. They're sponsored by Pepsi. You can only get Pepsi. You can never get Coke. And... Oh, I made a three-pointer. How about that? Okay, the Pacers. Michael Williams still here. Michael Finley. Jerry Stackhouse. Carl Malone, Eric Dampier, Corey Alexander, Scott Burrell, Chris Mim, Dave Johnson, Joe Wiley, BJ Tyler, Sasser, Smith, Childress. Not the greatest bench. It's a very weak bench, in fact. This is a very top-heavy team. But the starting five is really talented. And bringing in Jerry Stackhouse, we'll see how much – that improves the team and, and, and the overall roster. Um, but yeah, we're reaching the end of the Carmelo era. And I, I want to see if they can go out with a bang, uh, bringing in Jerry Stackhouse. So far, every time, wherever, wherever Jerry Stackhouse goes, uh, the team misses the playoffs. So I'm wondering if he's a, a curse. So I want to test that out with this Pacers team. The Pistons, Baron Davis, St Stacey Ogman, Cedric Sabalos, Kevin Garnett, Brad Miller. Lindsey Hunter coming off the bench, Jim McElveen, Percy Hawkins, Drazen Petrovic coming off the bench too, Horace Grant, Richard Jefferson, Walt Williams, Dwayne Shintius. I like this bench a lot, actually. Here's Brian Scalabrini. <laughs> Scalabrini. I like this bench a lot. You got a nice mix of young guys and some veterans. Uh, 
And the starting five is great. This could be a really, really fun Pistons team. I'm looking forward to this team a lot. You know, Baron Davis is still very young, 22 years old, but he's been playing lights out despite his low field goal percentage this past season. But he's been playing lights out for this team, helping them make the playoffs of the last three years. Kevin Garnett, obviously, is an MVP candidate every year. Yeah, this Pistons team could be very dangerous. They have the bench. Uh, they, unlike some other East teams that are good, they have actually they actually have a really good bench. So I'm, I'm wondering how that translates into on the court. This is what the Pistons court now looks like. I think this looks really cool. Uh, this looks awesome. And this is what this is what 2K gave us. So I'm really excited about seeing some games on this court for sure. Yeah, the Pistons new look. Uh, I, I missed the teal. I missed the teal, but uh, I'm I can get used to this new look for sure. So that's the that's the Pistons. The Raptors. Uh, they had a bad season last year. What were they? 27 and 55. But I think they could bounce back this year. Mike Bibby, Doug Christie, who they got from the Spurs, Wally Zerbiak, Paul Gas Pal Gasol, who I'm really curious to seeing his rookie year. Ben Wallace. I traded away Joe Smith and Antoine Walker because I want to see this duo, this front court duo, Pau Gasol and Ben Wallace. I want to see them in action together. I'm really looking forward to that. Len Bias is coming off the bench, probably in his last season or his second to last season. Mark Jackson as well. He's he's reaching the end of his career. Bobby Phils. Then then their bench is a sh shrug worthy after that. Jeff Webster, Todd Phillip, uh, Todd Fuller, I should say, Anthony Johnson, Reggie Slater, and Gordon Gierczyk. I remember I remember him. I remember him. Uh, but yeah, solid starting five. I think they, I think they could definitely do better than twenty-seven fifty-five. But it's more so about Pau Gasol. How good is he going to be his rookie year? Can he help this team elevate them uh, into being a borderline playoff team, or is this a, a multi-year project for the Raptors? The Raptors have to like do a little bit of a rebuild. You know, Ben Wallace is twenty-six. Serbia is 24. This is still a young team. Christie is a bit old. Baby's only 23, so Balcasol is only 21. Yeah, this team, we'll see. I'm really curious to see how this team uh, looks. The Rock, the Rockets, Chucky Atkins, Harold Miner, Roy Marble, Alan Henderson, Stacey King, Blue Edwards, Earl Boykins, AC Green, Chris Anderson, Birdman, Birdman, Desmond Mason, Maurice Evans, Eddie Curry, Mateen Cleese, uh, Nocioni. So the Rockets have their own pick in 02, and I think they have their own pick in 03, uh, or at least it's a lottery protector or something like that. But uh, this team is not going to be good this year, even though they, they, they have some talented players on paper, but I can't imagine this team being all that good once be, once they see the court. So this it's really more about probably letting go of some of these uh, veterans by the trade deadline and getting a, getting a nice draft pick this upcoming season. Uh, because this team needs to move forward with the rebuild. They got Desmond Mason down here. Eddie Curry's a guy. Chris Anderson's a guy. Chuck Atkins, maybe he could be a point guard for the future for them. So here's the Rockets. So some differences to right here. We lost the blue uh, around the arc, right? And uh, the paint is more colorful, I think, right? Because I think, I think before it was blue all around here and then i think the court was uh wood colored but now it's a bit different this is compact center and this is a this is a pretty close representation of what the court actually looked like in 2002 2002 season so the so spurs tim hardaway john starks sean elliott antoine walker david robinson kyle reeves chris carr brian steve scott williams jimmy fake that feck uh, Jimmy Watson, Mike James, Charles Smith, etc. Bench isn't much to write home about. But this is a good group. This is a solid group. You know, the, the key was trying to get a younger player like Antoine Walker uh, to see how he could fit with uh, David Robinson and uh, Tim Hardaway and John Starks. Could be interesting back backcourt. But they're old guys, you know, they, they, kind of, they match David Robinson's age more closely. Uh, Sean Elliott as well. And Antoine Walker... Hopefully he could be a, a sign of things to come, but in a good way for the the Spurs. Like the, the idea is that maybe he could, you know, uh, blend well with Theo Robinson, and maybe he could become their star as these guys start to retire and whatnot. But yeah, I don't know. Listen, the Spurs they had their chance 
they had their chances with Dennis Rodman and Doug Christie, and they blew it. So we'll see what they could do with this team here. The Phoenix Suns, they're starting a, a new chapter in their franchise. Tony Parker, Antonio Daniels, Dennis Scott, Austin Crozier, Ray LaFrenz, Kenneth Jeff Smith, Willie Burton, Malik Allen, Pablo Prigioni, Darius Miles, Michael Redd, who I guess is going to come off the bench for now, but eventually I see him being a, a star starting to guard for them. Raja Bell is still down here. I see him eventually uh, becoming a starter as well. Let's check out the court. I can't remember if this court changed last year, but in case it didn't, uh, here's the court. I can't, again, I can't remember if we changed this court last year or not. But uh, this is what it looks like now. And it's a mighty nice court, you know. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> all right. So the Sonics, Abdul Ralph, Nick Anderson, Bruce Bowen, Sean Kemp, Isaac Austin, Eldrick, Eldrick Trakasner, Elmer Spencer, Churchwell, Potapenko, Greg Anthony, Jonathan Bender. A decent bench, a great starting five. They almost won 60 games last year, 59-23. They made the Western Conference Finals. I can see them re replicating that for sure this year. Uh, they got some guys who are aging, but not too old. Abdul Ralph's only 30. So they're in, their, they're in their early 30s, you know. This team can still do some damage, in my opinion. So we'll, we'll see how that translates. Bruce Bowen is a hell of a 3 and D guy. A lot of great defense. Some scoring from Abdul Ralph and Sean Kemp. So yeah, I think it's an overall very solid team. Let me show you the Sonics core because it is different. I don't know about the fans this year. We'll see what the fans look like if they're dressed in all black. But this is the Sonics new court. It's pretty damn cool, in my opinion. And I guess this is their last look, right? This is it before the move to OKC. This is what they'll look like before they move to OKC. So we got the Timberwolves, Stephon Marbury, Ron Harper, Ron Artest, two Rons, Jermaine O'Neal, Antonio Davis, Sean Bradley, D. Brown, Morris Peterson, Scott Skiles, Purvis Ellison. And that's about it for their rotation. I don't know what to say about the Timberwolves. I'm shaking my head right now. I always, I'm always thinking they could be uh, – they could turn the corner and actually do something interesting. Uh, I think they could do something interesting this year, too. I think they could make the playoffs for sure. But I got to see it to believe it. That's where I'm at with this team. Got to see it to believe it. Are they actually going to be good? We'll see. Trailblazers, Demon Sotomay, Richard Hamilton. Now they're starting two guards. Sharif Abdurrahim, Rashid Wallace, Tony Batty. Now they're starting center. Ramil Robinson, Ed Gray, Calvert Chaney, John Wallace, Sean Respert. Get Radmanovich, Mike Geiger. Devin George down here, Danny Portson. Definitely a lot of talent. They've been able to make the playoffs the last two seasons. Uh, let's see, 44 and... Yeah, 45, 37, 44 and 38. I could see him do it being about the same this year, maybe a little bit better. Uh, Rip Hamilton, it's kind of, the, kind of about his development along with uh, the rest of these guys. Again, their bench is okay. Maybe it doesn't really help propel them to many more wins than 45, 46. But overall, this team is on the right path, I think. I, I like where this team is at. And we'll keep, we'll see if there's an opportunity for them in the future to make a move to really make them, uh, to get to the next level, which is, you know, finals contention. Because I think they're on the cusp of that, but I think they're missing a player. They're missing somebody. They're missing somebody here. Maybe it's a star center. I don't know. Although there aren't that many star centers to go, to go around. So uh, I feel like they're on the cusp of doing something special. Maybe making the conference finals, maybe making the finals in the near future. But right now, they're, they're still kind of in the middle of the pack of the West right now. Uh, the Golden State Warriors, Jason Kidd, Allen Houston, Isaiah Ryder, Robert Ory, Juwan Howard, B.J. Armstrong, Clarence Weatherspoon, Frankie King, Eric Williams. Man, the, the, the roster really takes a dip right around here. Wang Zizi, Danny Boyce, Ruffin, Cook, Batiste. Uh, it's funny to think that they won the championship two seasons ago, but I'm not, I think they can make the playoffs for sure. But as far as being an actual contender, I'm not seeing it. They definitely surprised us, uh, in the year 2000. So maybe that they can surprise us again, but I'm not seeing finals contender here. I, I think they feel like a, more like a middle of the pack team, like the, like the trailblazers. Um, so yeah, we'll see. 
But yeah, it's it's starting to become more and more of a question as to how this team won the finals a few seasons ago. They did have Horace Grant, and they don't have him now, so maybe that maybe that's a big factor. But uh, definitely a talented team. Obviously, Jason Kidd's very talented. He's an MVP candidate every year. Uh, but again, I'm just not feeling that excited about this team. Uh, they have a lot of money tied up in Kidd, Houston, Ryder, and Juwan Howard. There's not that, there's not that much more they could do uh, roster-wise unless they get rid of some of these guys. Uh, but for now, I like this team still. I think they could be a very fun team. Uh, and again, they're only one year removed away from winning the finals. So it's not time to panic just because they only won uh, 45 games last year, lost in the first round. Let's let's see how they do this year before we start to uh, re- reassess. Finally, the Wizards, Gilbert Arenas is the starting point guard. Dimon Jones, Mike Miller, Al Harrington, Jason Williams, Kenny Green, Dan Marley, George Murison, Derek Chivas, Jason Hart, Pfizer, Kenny Thomas, Derek Coleman, Tier Brown. A lot of decent, solid, young guys here. Mike Miller uh, could be a really nice uh, outside threat. Right? Outside scorer, Al Harrington, Jason Williams. I don't think this team's going to do anything crazy this year. They won 16 games last year. I could see them winning 25, 27. But it's really about the development of this team. And, you know, maybe maybe in the offseason, in the draft, maybe, dot, 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 maybe the Wizards can get Amari Stoudemire. Tishon Prince would be a hell of a pickup for them. Yao Ming, Matt Barnes. 2002 isn't the craziest draft. you got Karen Butler. you got... Uh, Jared Jeffries, yeah, it's not the craziest uh, um, talent-wise. It's not the most deep deepest draft, but you know if they got Yao Ming, uh, that would be that would be something. So yeah, this Wizards team, obviously with Gilbert, Re- Gilbert Arenas as a rookie, being the starting point guard, and you got 21-year-old Mike Miller, 21-year-old Aaron Harrington. It's a very young team. It's about the development. It's about Dan Marley and Kenny Green and Jason Williams being. Uh, mentors for these guys, Mirasan as well. So we'll see if they the, if they could be good mentors for the young guys, and you know maybe the Wizards take a take a step towards respectability. But for now, they're gonna be uh, they're still they're still in a rebuild. But you know what? Maybe they get a good good player in this draft. Maybe they maybe they get uh, a a great player in the 2003 draft. For now, they got Arenas. So I think they're going to be a lot of fun just based on the fact that they have a Gilbert Arena. So that is this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I am Night Sports Gamer. Thank you for subscribing if you have already. If you haven't subscribed already, do so now. I think this this season could be a hell of a blast. And um, But yeah, thank you guys for very much for liking and subscribing. Like this video too. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and talk to you next time.